Hi everyone, in this episode of Programming Algorithms we're going to look at the idea of searching. Searching is a really important function within um, a lot of computer systems and software systems. If we think about Google, how Google works, for example, Google has an algorithm called PageRank and the PageRank algorithm works by exploring the web and finding pages appropriate, whatever your search is. So you Google the phrase software engineering, for example, it's going to return pages about that topic. We know the scenario, you go into the Google homepage, you type in whatever phrase, and then it returns pages ordered and ranked um, as, to do with the relevance of the topic you're searching for. Uh, a lot of elements of how Google does that are proprietary, so they don't tell anybody how they do the secret sauce in there somehow, but there are some elements that we know how it works. There's two parts to the um, Google search algorithm. The first part is that Google has a bunch of little programs called spiders that go off onto the web, start at some known page that has links on it, and explore those links to other pages, and explore the links in those other pages to other pages, and keep going around until they've got a copy of everything on the web. So once they've got their Google collection of what pages are currently on the web, um, that allows them then to do searching locally, because they don't search the whole web live when you do a Google search, what they do is create a local copy and then search that one instead. So then the um, searching algorithm, I guess, is something like check each page element, check p each page in the collection and keep on checking and if whatever search string we're looking for is in the current page, add that to the list of outputs onto the screen. If that, if that page doesn't have whatever our search string is, then don't worry about it. Once the Google has all the pages that has whatever term we're looking for identified, then what it does is it orders them in a special way. It uses an algorithm called PageRank. So this is a rough idea of what, how the PageRank algorithm works. If I have a lot of websites that point to my site, then everybody is voting and saying this must be a good web page. So if I have thousands of links to me, and I have good, I have links from my page out to other very credible sources, then we can assume that I'm a very credible page. Whereas if I have a web page and nobody's linking to me, then that's less authoritative or less respected. So it's a real wisdom of crowds kind of thing, and it's a real democratic way of ordering the pages. If a lot of people point to me, then the assumption is I must be a good authoritative page. If nobody points to me, then I mustn't be a good page. And the second half, again, to repeat is that if I have links to good authoritative sites coming out of me, then we know that um, I, I must be somewhat an authoritative source. So it's all about um, kind of chains of trust and things like that. So that's how Google does searching. It's obviously databases as well. There's databases like Oracle or DB2 or MySQL or SQL Server or Postgres. And those are databases that store data and you have to do searches on those um, databases as well. If we think about, let's say, using the Amazon page, it's got a database of a bunch of books and CDs and other things in it. I can search by the title of the book, I can search by the author of the book, I can search by a partial title, I, I think I can search by ISBN number. There's a lot of ways I can search for the information and it returns back. Let's say I search by author, it goes through the database and finds every record that has that author's name associated with it and then returns those records to the screen. So that's what searching is about. It's a finding a particular or a particular set of values. So for our array searching, because we're thinking about arrays, if we remember the integer array we were doing before that had 40 values in it from 0 to 39, let's say we want to find out everybody who's aged 18 in that array. Um, the typical simple way we would do it is called sequential search. So we just search one element at a time. So how does sequential search work? You start with the first element and check if that is the value 18. If it's not, move on to the next one, move on to the next one. Keep on moving until we find the number 18. So let's say the ninth one across is 18. Then we've found one. So we say element number nine, this, somebody is 18 there. And we keep on searching through the array. And then let's say we find out that element number 25 is also 18 years old. And then we keep on going to the end of the array. This is a very slow search, really. Because if the array is 40 characters long, 
we have to do 40 checks. If it's 100 characters long, we have to do 100 checks. If we had to search every web page on Google every time we were searching for a search string, that would be very, very slow. So it's effective in the sense that it searches every element of the array, but it is slow. Um, it's, it's as if I was looking up somebody's name in the phone book and I was looking up John Smith's phone number. If I was looking up John Smith's phone number and I started on page one and went to Aaron Aardvark and then looked at every name on the first page, looked at every name on the second page, every name on the third page until I got to John Smith, that would be an extremely inefficient way to search because I'm looking at every element in the array and based on what we've said about sequential search, even if I found the John Smith I was looking for, I keep on going through the phone book to the end of the phone book. So that's a sequential search, it visits every record in the array. A different way of doing that, well, let's look at the code for it first. It's, it's exactly as you'd expect. We, um, let's say our search value is age 18 and the size of the array is 40. We go from zero to 39. We check if the age number of this element is the same as the search value, which in this case is 18, and then we print out user whatever is 18. So in our case, I think it's user 9 is 18 and user 25 is 18 will be printed out there, and then that'll be the whole thing done. There is a trick we can do to speed things up, and we've kind of alluded to it already. We can speed things up by sorting the data first. So if we take the elements of the array and sort them smallest to biggest, then we can do what's called a binary search. So this is the data sorted now. We have 16, 18, 23, 23, 33, 33, 34, 43, all the way up to 78 and 82. So all the values are in ascending order now. So if we have the values in ascending order, which will take a little bit of time to do to sort it, and we'll look at sorting algorithms later. But once we've got the data sorted, then we don't need to do a sequential search anymore. We can do what's called a binary search. So how does that work? How that works is we jump to the very middle of the array and say, is the value we're looking for less than or greater than the middle value? If the value is less than the middle value, then we just forget about the upper half of the array and just search the lower half of the array. Then we jump to the middle of that half and then we check its value is it less than or greater than. So we'll see with an animation. Um, we jump to the middle. If the value, uh, in this case, it's the second value along is less than the middle, then let's cut out the top half of the array and jump to the middle of the half of the array. We jumped, because the value is less than the current value, we, we cut that array in half again and look at the, jump to the middle of the array again. Then we cut that in half because it's in the lower half of the array and, and check is the number we're looking for in the first top half or the bottom half of the array. Then we find we cut it again and then we found the value we're looking for. So if we were investigating a 40 element array, it would just take us five or six checks. We wouldn't have to parse the whole 40 elements. It would just take five or six checks to find the correct element. For a 1000 element array, we just have to do 11 elements to find the number we're searching for. Because this is an exponential we're cutting half of the array out each time, so we're phenomenally increasing our search space. There is an initial overhead or cost, because we have to sort the data first, whereas with the sequential search, we don't have to sort the data. But once we've sorted the data, we can do, a binary search makes the, the searching process phenomenally faster than a sequential search. What does the code look like? The code works as follows. We have two markers, the first and the last element of the array. They will mark out, they'll start off as mark, marking out 0 and 40 or 39. When we have the array, we, we, we figure out that the index is last plus first divided by 40, divided by 2, I beg your pardon. So it's last is 40, first is 0, divided by 2 is 20. So we jump to the 20th element of the array and we check if the value we're looking for is less than the 20th element of the array or greater than the 20th element. If it's less than the 20th element of the array, then we don't search from 0 to 40 anymore, we search from 0 to 20. Then we jump to the middle element of 0 to 20, which is the 10th element. And when we go from 0 to 10, we just check if the, is the array in 0 to 10 or 11 to 20. If it's in 11 to 20, then we just search from 11 to 20. 
go to the middle of 11 to 20, which is the 15th element. If the 15th element is less than the number we're looking for, then it's between 15 and 20 is where our element is, and so on and so forth. So the code works by saying, as long as the first element is, is less than the last element and you haven't found it yet, so we have a boolean called is found, and that's set to false. Calculate the halfway between the current array we're searching. If the, if the middle element that we've jumped to is actually the value we're looking for, great, we set is found to be true. Otherwise, what we do is check if the middle element is less than the search value. If it's less than the search value, then we, we, we say that the, the search is from the start to now the, the last element, index minus one. Otherwise, we don't change the last and we move the first element to be index plus one. Then we keep on looping around until we've, we've found the value we need. So that's binary search and it's well worth exploring that and playing around with it and implementing it. Thanks very much. Um, we'll see you on the next episode.